All right, everyone, welcome to the December 14th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, there are two things that we have to abide by on this call. The first is our antitrust policy notice. Uh, so there are obviously members of different organizations on this call. So we need to make sure that we are not participating in any activities that are prohibited under any of the antitrust and competition laws across the world. The second thing that we have to abide by is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Um, basically says to be respectful of others, their ideas and opinions on the call and to act in a professional manner. Okay, with that, uh, we have two announcements. The standard one of the Hyperledger Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you would like to include anything in that newsletter, please do consider leaving a comment uh, for consideration in the link that is uh, in the agenda. And then the second announcement that we have is that this is our last POC meeting of the year. Uh, we will not be meeting on the 21st, the 28th or January 4th. Uh, we will be, obviously, if I can add correctly, I guess that would mean we would be meeting on January 11th um, as our first TOC meeting of 2024 uh, with the um, uh, new TOC members uh, being part of that. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? I guess uh, I will say that... Uh... This is going to be my last uh, call. I'm going to officially retire from Hyperledger at the end of the year. So it's been a, quite a run. I've been involved in Hyperledger since the very launch. And uh, I've been on the TSC and TOC and, you know, throughout all these years. And uh, it's time for me to move on. Thanks, Arno. Um, we appreciate everything that you've done for Hyperledger uh, in your run in the, the time that it's been going. Uh, I appreciate all of the leadership and the, um, the expertise that you have brought to the conversations that we've had. And I will definitely, uh, for one, be missing you um, in the upcoming meetings. Um, but we understand that there are other things that may have caught your attention and uh, and uh, we wish you obviously well in, in those endeavors. And um, yeah, I'm just sad that you had to make that announcement right now. <laughs> I understand that, you know, it's always a bit uh, bittersweet. Those moments is a bit like, oh, well, but it's definitely a big page in, uh, in my life. You know, I yes. it was a big thing, so. Uh, it's not without uh, some emotion that I'm announcing it, but you know, that's how it is. I wish you all good luck. Great. Well, you still have 55 minutes to hang out with us. Yes. And, uh, keep us honest with, uh, with what we're there. trying to do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Arno. Anything else, Thank any you. other announcements that anybody would like to make? I see it's uh, Connor, Connor here. Um, I, I guess this is my, this is my first meeting um, as, a, as, a, as an incoming TOC member. Um, but I, I don't know if it would come under the announcements or an agenda item is just to discuss Web3J um, in terms of um, I plan to submit a pull request um, in the coming days to propose it for incubation um, within Hyperledger and um, it's, it's, it's something that I'd um, you know, hope uh, over the, the coming weeks um, in the run-up to the next meeting that could just have a chance for the TOC members to ha have, have a read over so we could have it as a formal as, as a formal discussion for it in the, the, the kickoff meeting in January. Great. That is perfect. Thank you, Connor. Um, yeah, I look forward to uh, getting that out to all of the TOC members for their review. I've had a sneak preview uh, and I'm, I'm you know, very thrilled and happy that that is coming in. So we will definitely make sure to include that as a formal agenda item in the new year. Wonderful. Okay, I'll, I'll get this submission made and then I'll circulate that just for the TOC members once it's done and then yeah, we can talk about it in the new year. Thank you. Yep, sounds great. 
And welcome, Connor, um, to the, the first DLC call that you're joining us. I appreciate you being here. You can hopefully see how, how we run things and, and get a feel for it before you have truly jump in at the, at the new year. Yeah, definitely. And um, pretty pleased to meet those of you who I've not met um, before. I know there's certainly some, some faces of, uh, that I have spoken to a number of times over the years. Thank you. Yep. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? No. Okay. Uh, so for quarterly reports, uh, I saw the Basie report come in. I think the Cello report came in as well, although for some reason I did not get a notification um, to my email like I typically do when PRs come into the TOC. So, um, you know, definitely have a look and, and see if there's uh, the Cello report out there for you to review if you haven't had a chance to look at that yet. Um, but any questions on the um, on the BASU report or the Cello report that we should be talking about? Uh, so then as far as past due reports, uh, we do have the transact report. Um, we kind of left this question here um, just to figure out basis on our simplify the, the project lifecycle, what's going to happen. Um, we also have the caliper and firefly report that are due. Um, so we'll probably be sending a reminder to those folks and letting them know that uh, we're expecting a, a report to come in. For upcoming reports, we do have uh, the annual review uh, reports that are starting for Q1 of next year uh, with Cacti and Fabric that are expected to be uh, coming in for the very first meeting that we have in 2024. One of the things that we decided when we put together the annual review process is that we needed a primary and a secondary TOC member to be responsible for taking a look at the health and status of these projects uh, to make sure that they um, you know, don't need to, to change the, the life cycle stage that they're in. Um, one of the uh, other constraints of that is that the person or people who are already maintainers of those projects cannot be the primary or secondary of those annual reviews. Uh, so uh, at this point, I guess I would like to see if we can get uh, two volunteers for Cacti and two volunteers for Fabric to um, be the TOC representatives that will be reviewing those and having a deeper look at those reports. Steven? Not to volunteer, but um, could we do a poll um, where, or a uh... A, a, yeah, a poll basically that says, here's the two that I would like to do, or here are the ones that I want to do, um, so that we could see if voluntarily we can figure across the year which ones people take as opposed to um, one at a time, um, so we can assign them over the entire year. I didn't realize two were coming so soon. Um, yeah, I know. I When I put the, the agenda together, I was like, oh, shoot. Um, that's going to be our first meeting. <laughs> um, yeah, we could definitely do that um, to, to pull everybody and see which are their top two or um, also maybe to find out which ones that they shouldn't be involved in um, to make sure that we don't. Oh, good idea. Yeah, good idea. And, and, and then people can maybe do horse trading after that to figure out which who does which one exactly. Okay. Um, I... I, what I propose we do, and I'll set this up if you want, is um, I'll just create uh, GitHub issues for each project, and then the talk members can uh, comment on those issues as they wish. I, that's what I propose. Sounds great, Ray. I appreciate that. So, sound good, Stephen? Sure. Okay. Um, and see, I thought you raised your hand so quickly because you really wanted one of those too. So, um, okay, let's do that. 
Uh, and then I will be back for a week before our next meeting. So hopefully um, you guys can maybe potentially answer or, or take a look at those. And then maybe I can assign somebody um, and be the bad guy assigning people. All right, sounds like plan. Uh, life cycle simplification. All right, so last time we talked about this most of the meeting. So um, I do want to limit the time frame because I do want to get to the retrospective today. Um, so let's let's say that we have no more than mm, twenty five minutes to talk about this. All right. So uh, after the last meeting, what I did was um, I put together a bunch of drawings, a bunch of options in this PR that you can see. Um, I have uh, actually they're in the conversation um, thread. Right. Sorry. Um, basically trying to take all the options that we talked about the last time uh, and, and putting together pictures, uh, starting with Arno's version, um, putting together an option for uh, being able to move back and forth between incubation plus also being able to enter directly into graduated. That's option two. Um, I did also redraw that option uh, Rama, based on your comment this morning, but that's lower and we'll take a look at that. Um, option three is uh, the, the um, having a pre-archive state. So this is basically Arno's version plus adding this pre-archive state in here. So we're not going straight to archive. Um, option four is basically option two plus the pre-archive state. Uh, option five is my radical choice, uh, where we don't have incubation and graduate it, we just have a project. Um, and then obviously the idea behind option five is that we would implement some sort of badges. Uh, so if you keep scrolling, right, there's a few more options. Option six, uh, was the, um, basically Arno's version with the ability to go back to incubation from graduated. Option seven is adding the pre-archive state plus the ability to go between incubation and graduated or back from graduated to incubation. If we scroll a bit more, I think is uh, at the very bottom probably is uh, Rama, you asked if we could do this sort of drawing, which is basically option two, but instead of incubation and graduated being right next to each other, um, it's uh, incubation followed by graduated. So it's uh, really no different than option two, um, but maybe a bit clearer to, to read. So with that, we've had a lot of discussions um, about the pre-archive state, uh, what, what do we call it? Is it dormant, is it inactive? As well as should we have that pre-archive state? Um, but I, and we've also had some conversation in the PR about whether or not we want a proposal to be able to go straight to graduate it, or if we think that it's, um, you know, just as good to, to fall into incubation as an initial step and then a quick move to graduate it, similar to what Pace you did. Uh, and so, yeah, I guess these are our options. Let's discuss. Bobby? I personally like option two. Um, I think it is clear. It's easy to teach. It's easy to understand. Um, and again, that pre-archive state, if it's apparently easy to move back into, I think, you know, it shouldn't be a problem to have a pre-archive. You just archive if you want to come back because you're interested in reviving it. You come back in incubation or graduation, depending on when you left or the state of the project when you left. Thanks, Bobby. Rama. If we can go back from the pre-archive state to the graduated state, then uh, I'm not sure if there's a clear semantic difference between incubation and pre-archive, because it just means that there are, there are stages of the project which are uh, strictly lesser than graduated, but 
the project isn't yet uh, completely defunct. So uh, I don't know if we need an extra state, but uh, just an extra arrow, a back arrow would suffice. Okay, thanks, Ramo. Jim? Yeah, um, uh, I think, I feel like the, the main difference between one and two, one being Arnold's version is you can go from incubation directly to archive. Um, I feel like that's a useful option to have. So I would go for option one. Okay. Uh, Steven. Uh, as I mentioned in the um, notes, I'm a fan of a, a dormant state at the end um, to get the message out about the state of a project. I don't think sending it back to incubation is the same as dormant. Um, I think that's a very different um, message to the to the community. Um, and so I am still a fan of pre-archived uh, or definitely something other than pre-archived, but um, a, a state um, before archived. Okay, Arno. So I think it might be more productive to, to separate those questions because we know that in those options, there are different different questions being tackled, right? So there is whether we want to allow within option, I guess, two and four, uh, which we see right now, there's notion of, can we go back from graduated status to incubation? That's one thing. Whether we have a pre-archive kind of state with dormant or whatever we call it is another question that I think we should try to answer independently of which option we choose, because that will help us narrow down the number of options we're looking at. Okay. Right now, I, I feel like based on everything I've heard, option seven is probably going to um, be the one that's going to meet the majority of people's um, ideals, but uh, that's just based on what I'm hearing so far. David? Uh, I guess I'm agreeing with Stephen's comments about the pre-archive state. I think it's important to give that signal to the community that something is winding down. And I do agree that's different than incubation. So incubation is winding up, whereas um, a pre-archive state is winding down. Whether we call that dormant or inactive, I don't really care. I suggested dormant, but um, I can go either way. I thought dormant might be nice because it would have some consistency with the current life cycle. Uh, and the reason I think it's important to have this pre-archive state uh, is because you might want to do some things in that wind down phase. There might be a, a set of PRs that come in around transition plans or deprecation plans that might not, you know, it might take a couple months or weeks or months to get all those thoughts uh, put into the project. Also, there could be things like um, third party dependency vulnerabilities that pop up in that time frame that people might want to fix. So even though a project isn't actively being developed, people still might want to fix things that get broken over time. And I think that dormant state is a good way um, to kind of wind things down in a graceful way. All right, thank you, Mark. Hey, uh, just a quick question. So in all of these uh, diagrams, there are arrows from say archived and pre-archived to incubation. Is this going to be like just the normal process or is there going to be a different process from going from archive to pre-archive to incubation? Um, you know, and if it's if it's just the normal process, then this should probably be going back to a proposal rather than to the incubation state itself. Yep, makes sense, Hart. Um, yeah, I think uh, we we obviously need something to kick off the going back from pre-archive to incubation, and that will be probably a proposal. I mean, um, of some sort, right? I don't know if it's a big formal proposal or just a, a TLC. It's probably, it probably potentially could be a, a formal one or a semi-informal one, I guess. Yeah, I mean, my intuition was that you'd have to go through the regular proposal mm -hmm. process, but, um, you know, obviously you wouldn't necessarily have to. Okay. Rama? Uh, I get what uh, Dave and Steven are talking about uh, distinguishing a pre-archived state from an incubation state, but in that case, uh, in option seven, what does the back arrow from graduated to incubation mean? Should should there not just be a straight uh, 
progress some incubation to graduate it to pre archived and then back to incubation if necessary uh so i think the the reason for this back arrow that we have from graduate it to incubation is with the annual review process we have talked about potentially um well the idea behind the annual review process and what the governing board was looking for was the ability to make sure that a project was in the correct state. Um, so basically, in my mind, what that means is when we do an annual review, if a project is graduated, uh, we have a decision to make. Uh, and that decision is, does it stay graduated? And does it move back to incubation? Or does it move to a pre okay or dormant state, whatever we're calling it? Um, and those are the options that we have to make in that particular situation. For a project that is in incubation, the decision we have to make is, should it stay in incubation, should it graduate, or should it move to a dormant state? Um, and, and those are the sorts of things that we should be looking at as we do these annual reviews to ensure that they are in the correct uh, state or stage uh, of our life cycle. And so that's the the idea behind that uh, back arrow. Uh, no, I I get that. Uh, just uh, based on what Dave was talking about earlier, um, a, a project once been incubated and gone to graduated, uh, it doesn't does it actually actually make sense for it to go back to incubation because can, you can only incubate once, right? Uh, or I don't know, maybe I'm just uh, uh, maybe I'm taking these words too literally. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that we've got, uh, you know, part of part of our problem too is, is the names that we're using for these stages. Um, and Stephen, I'm going to skip you for a moment. Hart, you um, you probably want to comment on the names, right? Yeah, I just, exactly. I put it in chat. I mean, uh, Rama, we can definitely change the names if we want. Um, like the OWF has almost exactly the same project life cycle, but they call their statuses um, growth and impact. And this doesn't have necessarily like the final as, you know, um, it, it doesn't have the sort of finalized implications that incubation and graduation have, right? A project could go from an, being an impact project back into a growth stage or something, right? Yeah, I think those are more... Uh... Uh, time neutral terms, yeah. So yeah, okay. I guess just don't. I wouldn't get hung up on the names. We can always change them. All right, great, Stephen. Uh, I was just going to throw out, and this is minor, but everything requires a proposal to move between states. So I don't think we need to move. And I think it would be confusing to move pre-archive to incubation or to to proposal. Um. Everything requires a discussion to transition, so uh, I think we can leave off that detail. Um, yeah, that's all. Okay. Um, on that comment, right? If if you could do a refresh, I don't know if it automatically shows up at the bottom, but I just did add that uh, view that Hart uh, suggested for um, yeah, moving from pre-archive to proposal. So it does make it a, a little uglier, but uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's option seven, which is pre-archive to proposal. That's the only difference. Um, Arno. Yeah. So the the yeah, I think that's reasonable. But so two things. Well, first, you know, I agree with what David was saying earlier that I think if we have this pre-archive, might as well stick with the existing name dormant. Sure. rather than just change. But uh, beside that, my whole point with the change from end of life to archive was to allow to get back out of this archive mode. And now it seems like this is a dead end, just like end of life. I feel, and I'm not a voting TOC member, I'm not a TOC member at all, but I, I feel that if you are archived, um, it would, or pre-archive, it would be a new proposal where you would need to make your case, right? So I, I think there's kind of an implied arrow there. If you were archived, if someone came in and wanted to get 
okay. URSA going again, you know, they would need to make a proposal. But that's my feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stephen. Shoot, I got hung up on what Roger said. Um, oh, uh, um, uh, I don't know. Um, an end state is an end state, no matter what you call it. So um, archived, and particularly because the first thing we do when we archive something is we put it into the repos into archive state, which really sends a, a message. Um, that's my point of why we need something ahead of that. So that there is both the opportunity to um, revive something um, and the opportunity to do something ahead of the ending of it. And again, I'm colored by the URSA event and, and what happened with it and um, what scrambling it meant. Um, and maybe it's different from others because URSA had so many or had connections to other projects. And so the impact affected other projects. So um, maybe that's um, uh, that's too much uh, influence there on me. But that's why I think it's important is um, for having that. It's not dead yet. Um, maybe we call it life support. Um, that's all. It's it's funny that you just changed that to life support because I mean that's kind of what deprecate it was supposed to be right the ability to hang on for another six months before it actually reached end of life but um, yeah interesting art yeah Tracy so following Gry's suggestion and I think someone else's suggestion uh, maybe we note that every arrow requires a proposal and we just get rid of the proposal state in the diagram that okay. might simplify things and it might help us uh just reach convergence okay uh jim yeah i guess i'm still struggling with the pre-archive um especially given arnold's comment that uh archived it also supposed to be revivable uh back to the beginning um i feel like we are here uh, using very logical uh, thinking through this, right? But when you deal with a community, I, I think we need to assume that the community needs uh, like 100% more extra signal to make a move, right? Compared to a, you know, a, a logical, rational individual. I'm... I, I'm leaning towards like using archive to send a very strong signal to say that <clears throat> if you depend on something and you want something, uh, you better do something about it because it's archived. Nobody is going to do anything about it until you step up. Um, putting something in pre-archived, I think the community will still just wait, just like before. Nobody's going to do much with it. And yeah, so that's 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 the point. I I I just feel like pre-archive is no better than incubation. It, it doesn't send a strong enough signal. Dave. I do think pre-archive sends a pretty strong signal, especially if we call it something like dormant. Um, and you, if I think of it as a transition period to end of life or archived or whatever we want to call the last one. So if people are using a project, they might want a little heads up that this thing is going to go away. Um, and there might be some transition plans needed, whether that's in the documentation uh, or maybe you have to do a couple, of pull, a couple minor pull requests to ease the transition somehow. I think most projects will need this small transition period before they go archive. Archive literally means zero pull requests are allowed against it. And I don't think we want to um, archive something and then say, oh, please unarchive un this. I want to do one more final PR. I think that's a little bit silly. So that's why I like this um, pre-archive dormant state. All right, I changed it to dormant in my picture so that we, because uh, that seems to be what people 
uh, Rama. I think what uh, Arno was saying earlier and what he emphasized in the last meeting was he wanted a way for an archive project to get back on track. So I think, Arno, correct me if I'm wrong, but you would like an arrow, maybe a dashed arrow from archive back to incubation, right? Via a proposal. And then yes. it will go through the cycle again. That, that's what, yes, that's what I did like. In which case, I don't know if you need an arrow from dormant to incubation. Maybe uh, should we have an arrow from dormant back to graduated or do people feel that you always have to go to incubation before going to graduated? I would think that uh, anything that went from should never return to graduation. Uh, just given the fact that it's probably a new set of people who are coming in taking on. And now obviously they can move quickly to graduation, right? Just like if you start a project in incubation, you can move quickly to graduate it. But uh, yeah, I, I would be very hesitant to say something can go straight back to graduate it, especially when you say people are going to maintain it. Okay, uh, I, I don't have a strong feeling about that, but uh, I was just thinking if uh, if a project has been marked as dormant because of uh, maintenance inactivity, and let's say they get the message and they get back and they, they start maintaining the project actively after that, then uh, the project still retains the attributes of a graduated state, right? Can you say yes. that again? If uh, I, I was I was saying that uh, if uh, uh, the the change of a project state from graduated to dormant, let's say it has the desired effect, and the maintainers then uh, get their act together and they start to maintain the project the way they were they were doing earlier before the project change became dormant, then that by definition doesn't the project retain the attributes of a graduated project? Does it need to go back to incubation necessarily? Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, I, to me, I think they they would hit dormant, then they come back, uh, start maintaining it again, that would move it back to incubation. And then when they're at the same level they were, then they can have to go to graduate. Okay, sure. I think that works for me. I, yeah, I have no strong objection to that. Okay. So I think it would be clearer to add an hour to this diagram we now have. From archive to incubation. From archive to incubation. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's closer to why I had initially just added dormant in the middle, which is, you know, I understand the arguments for it. Because otherwise uh -huh. I feel like we are missing the point of calling this archive rather than end of life. The whole point is we can resurrect it. Oh, but I understand you might want to say, well, we can always do that anyway through a proposal and we start a new project and build on the ashes of the previous one. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you. Yeah, something like this. It's not as pretty, I'm sorry. Mermaid is not the best for that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I just put a dotted line because um, somebody mentioned dotted line. Whether we want, if we want it solid, let me know. Solid, uh, Peter. I definitely want a solid line. For me, <laughs> <laughs> let me explain. For me, I read the documentation as rules of law, and so if. If there was no line, but I wanted to resurrect the project from archived, I wouldn't even bother sending a message saying, hey, could I do this? Because I would expect to be yelled at being said, haven't you seen our diagram? The diagram has no arrows, so it's impossible. And uh, I know that maybe not too many people think the same way, but there are some, and we would lose out on them even talking to us about going from archive to incubation just because of the lack of the arrow. Okay, Peter, I updated. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think we're uh, reaching our 25 minutes. Is this the one that we're happy with? Or content with? Because um, some of us don't want dormant, but others do. 
I could make a motion to, to <laughs> vote on that. Motion. Okay. Thanks, Peter. I think in the motion. All right. Thanks, Rama. So obviously we have to update the PR to reflect this, but um, I guess, you know, this one that's being displayed on the screen is what we are uh, moving our life cycle to. So Rai, did you want us to, did you want to take sure. us through a vote? In the matter before the TOC, Arno, how do you vote? I love staying for the first <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Bobby. I vote for it. Uh, David. Yes. Jim. Uh, yes. Peter. Yes. Rama. Yes. Stefan. Yes. Tracy. Yes. The matter passes with one abstention. All right. Thank you for that, folks. Um, so I can you, update the PR for you, Tracy, and thank you <laughs> as my will... last contribution to Hyperlinger. <laughs> that was great. I appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, now we will move on to our retrospective. All right. So I just wanted to spend some time talking about uh, what we accomplished this year. Um, you know, and, and get some feedback from the folks that are on the call uh, about things that, you know, went well, that we might like to do different, differently, that sort of thing. So uh, with that, uh, the first slide is just uh, something that you've probably seen before. It is the list of the TOC members um, for 2023. Um, so obviously, thank you everyone on this list for being part of the 2023 TOC. Um, Obviously, we had some new members joining us this year, uh, and uh, I think the contributions from obviously both our new and existing members have been great. And so I appreciate everybody uh, who has spent the, the last year working together uh, to make some great progress. Next, uh, these were the goals we came up. So this was our very first meeting. Uh, where we asked the question of what do we want to accomplish for 2023? Um, and I'm not going to read through these, um, but I will leave them up here for a bit as I just ramble on um, so that you guys can review what it was that we discussed in our very first meeting of uh, 2023 and see, you know, did we accomplish these goals in your mind? Uh, are there things that we didn't accomplish that maybe we want to focus on better? next year or differently next year. Um, and yeah, so I think hopefully, uh, given enough time for you guys to have a, a quick glance anyway. So moving on to the next slide, this is what we did accomplish in 2023. Uh, so we had a number of task forces. We started uh, you know, with the Security Vulnerability Disclosure Task Force where we uh, worked very closely with the Open SSF to come up with a security policy for us, as well as a template for our projects to use in their security uh, policy. And so we did approve that as we uh, made some progress with that, that particular task force. So um, that is one great accomplishment that we've had this year. Uh, the second one, the second task force that we focused on or at least that's on this list, uh, was the project best practices. Uh, so with the project best practices, we had a lot of discussions, great discussions about things that we think that uh, we are currently doing as maintainers that we, we feel are good practices for others to also follow. Uh, from that, we did create a project best practices guide. And then we adopted the, the GitHub contribution guide that existed in the original Fabric documentation. We brought that over to the TOC site um, to help people really understand what, it, what it's like to use GitHub to make contributions to the Hyperledger projects. And so those, those things um, came out of that particular task force. We have some ongoing uh, task forces uh, that we started but haven't yet finished, and we will obviously continue working on those throughout the next year. 
Uh, we have the documentation task force. Um, there's actually besides um, the documentation template lab that was created, uh, Bobby and the group um, it showed us kind of what uh, could exist in the metaverse as far as a library for Hyperledger. Um, and I think there was some, some really good stuff that came out of some of the, the experiments that were done uh, around AI, being able to answer questions and things like that. Uh, we do have a, another lab that's been started around some of that. And so I think there's you know, obviously a lot of, of interesting things that have come out of that. Um, but Bobby, is there anything that you'd like to add specifically on that documentation task force and um, you know, where we should think about taking that as we continue uh, Absolutely. with that? Yeah, it, well, thank you everybody for letting me have these uh, last three years on the TOC. It's been a, like an education and invaluable to me. So thank you for, for letting me uh, serve in that role. Um, the documentation task force is ongoing, which I think is something that um, as a TOC, we need to address the fact that this was supposed to be a six month project and we're now on like month nine, um, <laughs> just to maybe have an end or some kind of safety valve if they go too long. I don't know how you end documentation because it's continual, um, but we will be giving our recommendations um, at maybe the second uh, TOC meeting um, of the year to maybe vote on, you know, having it put somewhere for people to reference. Um, that would be the maintainer user guide to help them with their uh, checkpoints when they're moving their projects through this wonderful new life cycle. So you'll be hearing from us, from the task force to get it completed and get, you know, even, even the library activated or just put the stuff that's in the library on a wiki page or somewhere where everyone can access it. So you'll, we'll be doing great things in January. So thank you again. Yeah, thanks, Bobby, for that. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing what's was coming January. Um, the onboarding content task force. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure where this is at the moment. Um, anybody have any updates on on what exactly has happened here? If it, it paused and uh, because we haven't heard anything on that recently. Hi Tracy, it's Bobby again. I think that they're doing a meetup presentation soon. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that um, Ankasha is doing that. I can check with her and get back to you guys on the status of that. Okay, great. Appreciate that, Bobby. All right. Uh, Peter is working on the automated pipeline best practices. We have had a few meetings on that particular topic. Peter, anything that you'd like to add about where it's at and what you hope uh, next year will bring with that particular task force? Yes. We have... Uh the evaluation of some of the new ideas happening so in a sort of a dark fooding way within cacti. So that's why I've been holding back a little bit with the progress as well, apart from just not being able to spend that much time on it. The, the thing is that I handed off some of the tasks for the evaluation to people who came in uh, for the good first issues within the Cacti repo. But then because of that, they take a little longer because I'm also working with them on how to make it happen. And uh, so it, it would be faster if I just did, did it myself, but I figured it's a, it's actually a good way to get new contributors as well. And if they are willing to do it, then I don't want to be in the way of that. The downside is that it's going a little slower uh, but with that said, what I definitely want to get done early next year is to close out the uh, documentation on it and the survey, the survey first and then the documentation. And uh, for both of those, the dependent, well, for the survey, there's no dependency. We can run the survey. But for the documentation to be finalized, we need these little dog fooding test projects to finish first within Cacti. And I'm waiting for uh, the contributors to move that ahead as well. And uh, with that said, in the meantime, if anyone comes up with any new ideas on how to make it better, uh, you know where the document is. Or if you don't, then I can send you the link to the draft. And I'm happy to add a list of uh, to-dos within the document because 
uh, we would be happy to evaluate all ideas in terms of how to improve the situation. All right, thanks, Peter, for that. Um, I think it's great that you are taking the time to mentor new contributors as they come in uh, to, to work on this. So, um, you know, perfectly happy that that's taking longer uh, because in the end, I think it's going to only benefit, uh, you know, Hyperledger as a whole. So um, thank you for, for taking, always taking the time to help folks out. For the badging project life cycle, um, so Rama, uh, myself, Arun has been spending some time on this. Uh, obviously, we just went through and, and simplified the project life cycle. So I think some of the, the badging stuff, uh, maybe we have to take a, a bit of a back to the drawing board approach on this. But uh, Rama, anything that, that you're thinking about um, where we're at now and, and what you'd like to, to see as next steps? No, I think you summarized it. Uh, we had a set of proposals uh from our uh, discussions in the task force meetings. Uh, I had uh, a good chunk of a draft created uh, for a potential vote, but then um, uh, I had to shift attention to some of the tasks. And then uh, Arno proposed the simplified life cycle. And uh, I thought we should just wait to have a consensus on what the new life cycle is going to be before we uh, rework the, the badging. So uh, there's a ton of... Uh, uh, notes on from the various discussions and uh, I think the first thing I'll do after returning in the new year is uh, rewriting the draft and uh, maybe we can have another meeting of the task force before we bring the draft to a vote and uh, yeah. just one more thing uh, uh, since Bobby is uh, leaving the TOC but at least not hyperledger uh, we can definitely consider uh, her idea about building a project health dashboard uh, next year, maybe we can propose it as a hyperledger mentorship project. Sounds great. Thanks, Rama. And then the security artifact signing is the other ongoing task force. Uh, I know Arun was uh, trying to also do some dog fooding uh, to try and get some things working as a sample so that we could see exactly how this is going to work. Um, I, Arun's not on the call today, but uh, you know, I'm sure that we will continue this work as we move on into 2024. For the, the project focus, uh, we did approve two projects for graduation this year. Um, one was Cacti and the second was Firefly. We did move Transact to Dormant. Um, so now I guess, yeah, we have to figure out still now, do we archive it? Um, when, is, when is that going to happen? Uh, so we'll have to figure, um, and have some conversations with the maintainers there. And then we did approve both GRID and URSA for end of life. For the governance, uh, we moved a couple of things to GitHub that we didn't have on GitHub before, specifically the quarterly project updates and the meeting minutes. We uh, documented the project updates process. It's a process that we've had for a while, but uh, you know, really firmed that up um, based on Stephen's request. So thank you, Stephen, for asking for that. We added Nidhi as a Hyperledger lab steward. We made some updates to our maintainers.md file guidelines. Um, I think that was uh, another Steven uh, for, for working through that. And then uh, the last thing that we did uh, was to add the annual review project lifecycle process. Um, now I guess actually really the last thing we did was to simplify the lifecycle, but um, these are the things that we did accomplish in 2023. Anything that uh, anybody thinks I missed from this list? Nope. Okay. So then on the next slide, uh, this is truly our retrospective here. Uh, we've talked about what we've done. Um, the first thing that I want to ask you, are there any shout outs that anybody would like to make? Tracy does an awesome job. <laughs> Thanks, and you. Thank you for that. That's exactly. Daniela? Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to, you know, 
thank everyone, um, specifically, obviously, the outgoing TOC representatives. Thank you for your time, and your contributions over the years. Um, and then um, just everyone else, um, you know, the amount of work and the feedback I've gotten from the community around the talk processes and a lot of the project life cycle and a lot of the, you know, uh, enterprise grade recommendations that you all make um, are really making an, inf uh, an impact on the community. So I want to thank everyone. Um, congratulations to the new talk members as well. We're uh, looking forward to working with you in 2024 um, and everyone's continued support um, and congratulations to the new chairs as well. Um, and Tracy, uh, I second uh, everyone's comments around all your contributions. It's been fantastic um, to work, to continue to work with you. So thank you. Right. So thank, thank you, you, everyone. I know this is, uh, you know, everyone uh, spends a lot of time uh, supporting our Hyperledger community and it, and it shows. Yes, I, I will I will second the shout out to uh, all of the different PFC members and the contributions that you've made. Um, I, I also want to make sure that we uh, also call out specifically the, the task force chairs, or however we want to call that. Um, you know, without you, we wouldn't be able to accomplish half of what we've accomplished. So, um, you know, you should take that as, um, you know, looking at the, the things that we were able to add to the TOC processes and, and the changes that we've made um, are all because you've uh, led us through this and, and made this happen. So thank you so much for, for volunteering uh, or maybe being voluntold, uh, if you will, for some of you. Um, that you would lead a particular task force, but uh, you know, thank you so much for for the effort that you've put in. Any other shout outs that anybody has? All right, what do we think went well this year? Peter? I liked a lot us moving a little closer to using GitHub issues for governance and proposals and uh, reviewing the quarterly reports as well. I think that was great. Yeah, great. Thanks, Peter. So definitely part of our whole process, so it's, it makes it somewhat easier. Other things that people think went well? I think um, that I, I want you all to know how much I appreciate the professionalism and the uh, lack of drama in working with, with the Hyperledger talk. These meetings are always a pleasure. Well, not always a pleasure, but they're pleasurable. They, they're, they're run really well. And, uh, you know, everyone takes everyone seriously. And I, I really appreciate that. Uh, everyone, all the talk members should feel good that they've done the right thing. Thanks, Ray. Um, yeah, now, now, Ray, that you've said something, how, how could I miss shouting out to, to you and the other staff members um, for keeping me uh, sane uh, during these meetings, uh, running, helping me run these meetings and, um, you know, just making me uh, stay on top of things that I should be on top of, like the elections that I completely forgot. And you guys, I specifically, um, came up with the schedule for. So my bad uh, for not even thinking about that. But uh, yeah, you guys are, are the silent uh, force behind us. So thank you so much for that. You are very welcome. Anything else that people think went well? Here. Uh, it's just more of the same. I wanted to say thank you for all the foundation employees. Every time I show up at an event, at an event, uh, Danielle and Hart and David and Rai, everybody just greets me with a lot of enthusiasm, like I was uh, some important person. <laughs> Norm, right? <laughs> yeah. Cheers. And, uh, I'm sorry, that, that's too old of a reference. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is, 
the the organization, the structure. It really helps me too because I do forget things as well. And for example, uh, David Boswell and Sean, they always help with uh, event organization and they always push me to actually get it done, which probably would not happen without them. So, yeah, just a, a long list of uh, thank yous and compliments to everybody because it makes a big difference for me personally. Great. Thanks for that, Peter. All right. I'm going to combine these last two bullets in the last two and a half minutes that we have. Uh, things that you think we could do better or differently or recommendations that you have for next year's DOC. I'm sure we're not perfect. Probably something. I can't think of anything. I, I, you know, I've, I, you know, everything from my perspective has gone pretty smoothly. And, um, you know, what could we do differently? Probably a lot of things. What could we do better? Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head where something is causing pain or tension for me. I like having chat in our meetings today. I thought that was useful. Yeah, I forgot to turn it off. Um. I know. Don't do it. Keep it on. <laughs> it's a useful channel. Especially since I forgot to create the uh, December 14th channel in, or uh, thread in Discord this week because life gets in the way. It does. I, I think we've got a pretty good pace going. I think it's helpful. Um, to um, I, I thought, you know, coming on board this year and, and trying to understand the flow and, and where to jump in um, was made pretty easy and, and helpful. And I think we hopefully we can do that for the next TOC members but but you know saying how things work um really worked well and um, makes it much easier to jump in and so the well organized um clear processes really help great yeah and we do have three new members that are joining us for next year um yeah. so for those those three members obviously um, you know, we're here to help, right? If you have questions at any point, please don't hesitate to reach out or stop during, stop us during the meeting and say, what the heck is going on here? Um, you know, this is, this is intended to be an open discussion and, and we want to make the process easier and better for people. So yeah, please make sure that you stop me, raise your hand, um, you know, let me know that something needs to be said. Okay, well, then with that, I think we are at our time. And I do appreciate, again, everybody for their their work this year. Arno, Bobby, we will definitely miss you, um, you know, being on the TOC. Please don't hesitate to stop by. Uh, Bobby, I know you said you're going to still be around, so that's good. Yes, um, Arno, if you ever want to, you know, re, re, uh, you know, visit your past, please don't hesitate to stop in. Um, and yeah, I hope everybody has a great end of the year and uh, a great new year. And we will see you next year. Happy holidays, everybody. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Happy thank holidays. You. Thanks, all. Bye. See ya. Thanks.